This is the South Caucasus, and this is Georgia, depending on who you ask, that is. First, let's start with a brief history of Georgia. The country of Georgia has existed for more than 3,000 years, with the first evidence of humans there dating back to more than 8,000 years. In fact, early metallurgy started in Georgia during the 6th millennium BC, associated with the Sholoveri Shomu culture. After the Roman Empire completed its brief conquest of what is now Georgia in 66 BC, the area became a primary objective of what would eventually turn out to be 700 years of protracted Irano-Roman geopolitical rivalry and warfare. After fighting off Arabic and Persian invaders, the Abkhazian princes would eventually have enough power to claim more autonomy from the Byzantine Empire. The stage of feudalism's development and struggle against common invaders, as much as a common belief of various Georgian states, had an enormous importance for spiritual and political unification of Georgia. Georgia would eventually unite under the feudal Bagration dynasty in the 11th century. If we fast forward to 1783, Russia and the Eastern Georgian Kingdom of Kartli Kaheti signed the Treaty of Georgievsk, by which Georgia abjured any dependence on Persia or another power, and made the kingdom a protectorate of Russia, which guarantees Georgia territorial integrity and the continuation of its reigning Bagration dynasty in return for prerogatives in the conduct of Georgian foreign affairs. However, despite this commitment to defend Georgia, Russia rendered no assistance when the Iranians invaded in 1795, capturing and sacking Tbilisi while massacring its inhabitants, as the new heir to the throne sought to reassert Iranian hegemony over Georgia. Eventually, on the 22nd December of 1800, Tsar Paul I of Russia, at the alleged request of the Georgian King George II, signed the proclamation on the incorporation of Georgia within the Russian Empire, after which the Bagration royal family was swiftly deported from the kingdom. Fast forward to 1917, and after the Russian Revolution of 1917, the Transcaucasian Democratic Federative Republic was established with Nikolai Tsikhsitze acting as its president. The federation consisted of three nations, Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. However, as the Ottomans advanced into Caucasian territories of the Russian Empire, Georgia declared independence on the 26th of May 1918. However, in February 1921, during the Russian Civil War, the Red Army advanced into Georgia and brought the local Bolsheviks to power. The Georgian army was defeated and the Social Democratic government fled the country. And now back to the timeline of this video. On the 9th of April 1991, shortly before the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Supreme Council of Georgia declared independence after a referendum was held on the 31st of March. Georgia was in fact the first non-Baltic Republic of the Soviet Union to officially declare independence. And this may be because of the tension that existed due to their long and complicated history as neighbors. On the 26th of May, Zviad Gamaskurdia was elected as the first president of Georgia the first president of independent Georgia, that is. Gamaskurdia stoked Georgian nationalism and woe to assert Tbilisi's authority over regions such as Abkhazia and South Ossetia, which both had been classified as autonomous within the Georgian SSR. On taking office, Gamaskurdia was faced with major economical and political difficulties, especially regarding Georgia's relations with the Soviet Union. A key problem was the position of Georgia's many ethnic minorities, making up about 30% of the population. Although many minority groups had participated actively in Georgia's return to democracy, they were underrepresented in the results of the October 1990 elections, with only 9 of 243 deputies being non-Georgians. Even before Georgia's independence, the position of national minorities was contingent, and it often led to outbreaks with serious inter-ethnic violence in Abkhazia during 1989. In 1918, violent unrest broke out in the South Ossetian Autonomous Oblast between the Georgian's independence-minded population of the region and Ossetians loyal to the Soviet Union. South Ossetia's regional Soviet announced that the region would secede from Georgia and form a Soviet Democratic Republic. In response, the Supreme Soviet of the Georgian SSR annulled the autonomy of the South Ossetian Republic in March 1990. A three-way power struggle between Georgian, Ossetian and Soviet military forces broke out in the region. This resulted in the eviction of 25,000 people and the deaths of 51 people. 
After his election as the chairman of the newly renamed Supreme Council, Gamaskurdia denounced the Ossetian move as being part of a Russian ploy to undermine Georgia, declaring the Ossetian separatists to be direct agents of the Kremlin, its tools and terrorists. Gamaskurdia's opponents were highly critical of what they regarded as unacceptably dictatorial behavior, which had already been the subject of criticism even before his election as president. All of this would eventually boil over and... On December the 22nd, the Georgian civil war officially begins with a military coup against Gamas Hurdia by the opposition. This opposition is led by former Soviet foreign minister Eduard Shevardnadze. As I mentioned earlier, Gamas Hurdia was a nationalist and had been elected president in May 1991, after Georgia declared independence from the Soviet Union. However, his presidency was marked by authoritarianism and he faced opposition from various groups. On December the 23rd, the Georgian military declared a state of emergency in Tbilisi, the capital city, and they deployed tanks to suppress the opposition. Gamaskurdia would flee to the western region of Mingrelia, where he would continue to lead the loyalist opposition against Eduard Shevardnadze. On January the 6th, Shevardnadze would be elected as chairman of the Georgian parliament, and he would become the de facto leader of Georgia. By March 23rd, the Abkhazian war officially begins, as Abkhazian separatists, with support from Russia, declare independence from Georgia. The Abkhazians were an ethnic minority in Georgia, and they had been seeking greater autonomy from Georgia since the collapse of the Soviet Union. As the previous president of Georgia, Gamas Khurdia, wanted to completely remove their autonomy, they were afraid that the next president would do something even worse. So what did the Georgian government do in response to the Abkhazians' call for independence? Well, by May the 14th, Chevernadze's government declared a state of emergency in Abkhazia, and they launched a military campaign to retake the region. This did not make many Abkhazians happy. However, by August the 14th, a ceasefire agreement was signed between Georgia and Abkhazia, but it is soon violated. On September the 24th, the United Nations Security Council passed Resolution 795 condemning the violence in Abkhazia and calling for a ceasefire. On January the 6th, fighting would erupt between Georgian government and opposition forces in Tbilisi after Shevardnadze attempted to crack down on opposition parties and protesters. The opposition, which was led by Shevardnadze's former ally, Jaba Yoselani had been calling for greater political and economic reforms. However, Shevardnadze was ignoring him, so like any sane man would do, Yoselani launched a coup. But Yoselani's coup did not really go as intended, and a ceasefire agreement was signed between the Georgian government and the opposition forces with the mediation of Russian President Boris Yeltsin. However, Shevardnadze did have to agree to form a coalition government with the opposition and hold new elections. This did not make both sides very happy, but it was the best they could do. As Georgia was now facing internal issues, tensions between Russia and Georgia would escalate as Russian troops would enter Georgia to support Abkhazian separatists in the Gali district. The Georgian government would accuse Russia of violating the ceasefire agreement that they had signed a few months earlier. By September the 3rd, fighting would resume in Abkhazia as Georgian forces attempted to retake the region. However, Abkhazians would receive support from Russian military advisors and volunteers. On September the 27th, the Russian Air Force began bombing Georgian targets in support of the Abkhazian separatists. This would mark the beginning of Russian military intervention in the conflict. However, Russian military forces would only enter Georgia on December the 14th with Russian troops entering and capturing the city of Sukhumi. Shevardnadze would accuse Russia of an invasion and he would call for international support. On December the 31st, Zviad Gamashurdia died in circumstances that are still unclear. It is known that he died in the village of Zveli Hivula in the Samgrelo region of western Georgia. On the same day, a ceasefire agreement was signed between Georgia and Abkhazia, bringing an end to the Abkhazian War and the Georgian Civil War. The Georgian civil war that lasted from 1991 to 1993 had significant geopolitical consequences for Georgia and the wider South Caucasus. The first was the de facto independence of Abkhazia and South Ossetia, 
two regions which had been autonomous within the Georgian Soviet Socialist Republic. The second consequence was ethnic tensions. The civil war was largely fought along ethnic lines with Georgians and non-Georgians fighting against each other. This led to heightened ethnic tensions in Georgia and the wider region, which continues to this day. The third consequence was weakened state institutions. The civil war left Georgia with weakened state institutions, including military, police and judiciary institutions. This made it difficult for government to establish control over the entire territory of the country and to enforce the rule of law. The fourth consequence was economic decline. The civil war had a significant impact on the Georgian economy, leading to a decline in GDP, high inflation and rise in poverty. It also disrupted trade routes and infrastructure, hindering economic growth. The fifth consequence was rise of political factions. The civil war led to the emergence of new political factions and parties within Georgia, many of which were based on regional or ethnic identities. This fragmented the political landscape and made it difficult to establish a strong and stable government. Overall, the Georgian civil war had significant and long-lasting geopolitical consequences for Georgia and the South Caucasus region, reshaping political, economical and social dynamics in the area. However, this would not be the end of the story in Georgia, as all of this would eventually lead to... Good night.